All right, guys, we're back, and we're still looking for Stella. I'm very, very nervous. Okay, we gotta think real quick. We should go to the cops, right? Are you sure? Nothing against the officers of Scarlet Hollow, but you've met them, right? Do you think it's worth the trouble? As unhelpful as they are, we are dealing with a missing person. That's cop stuff. It's probably best to give them an eye. It's probably going to be more of a formality than anything, but there's no point in not covering all our bases. That was my opinion. I don't think they're very competent, but any help we can get is better than no help. So they can be looking uh, while we look, too. So we can just stop by, hey, Stella's missing. Can you look for her? The police station is exactly what you would expect from a town the size of Scarlet Hollow. It smells strongly of coffee and faintly of aged furniture and paper. And the general tidiness speaks of a department that doesn't get much of anything done. Duke and Bo are here, though. You get you to find Bo and Duke standing between you and the officers behind the desk. Now listen here, Hugby. Big Betty was set to win a blue ribbon, so don't you go tell me she was just a pumpkin. We worked real hard to get her that big. Raised her up in front of the sea. Just not fair, officer, sir. I understand that at all, but I just don't see what y'all want us to do about it. I know y'all cared about this pumpkin, but as it stands, this simply isn't a job the police can help you with. Now, if you were able to find some kind of evidence that Julius or somebody else stole this big Betty of yours, then you could get a lawyer involved and take it to s small claims court. Dang it, deputy. After finding evidence, what y'all are supposed to be good for? That Julius had been stealing that what rightfully belongs to the Callaways for all his life, and you folk ain't done a lick of policing to put an end to it. I told you we was better off handling this ourselves, daddy. Whoa there, what happened to you? I got fucked up, bro. Are you okay, Alex? Looks like you got kind of wrinkly since I saw you yesterday. Now, Bo, it's not kind of common on others' appearances. But you do look a mite bit sickly. You ain't picked up some disease, have you? I've always looked like this, question mark? <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I have a condition. I think I saw a special about something like that. A 12 year old kid has some weird disease and damn if she didn't look about 80. You should get the doc to take a look at you. It seems to be getting a lot worse. Yeah, we're not gonna get them involved in the supernatural stuff. Huh. Let's be honest here. Hey, Stella ran off last night and she's still missing. She isn't at home and none of us have heard from her. She what now? No, uh, that's just our Stella. Always running off. Don't we worry too much about it. She'll turn up. This is different, Earl. You know I wouldn't be up here bothering you if it wasn't important. Yeah, for one thing, someone threatened her last night. She's been trailing Alex since we got to town, too. Shouldn't be off on her own when there are so many ditchlings around. I'm sure you've all seen them by now. They're everywhere. Sure, we may have seen some strange animals lately, and we've certainly been getting a lot of calls about them. So either Scarlet Hollow is suffering some kind of mass hallucination, or we've been invaded by whatever they are. What are you expecting us to do about it? Your cops, bro, do something. Ain't y'all supposed to be shooting them or something? Now, now, son, we ain't animal control. We're the police. Are you kidding me? This town doesn't even have animal control at all. Well, maybe you should get one. Y'all are no use at all, you know that? Duke, you're so right, though. Them things have been after our chickens for at least a week now. Open your eyes, boys. There are strange things to put. Yeah, boys, open your eyes. Let's just get going. Well, no one can say we didn't try. Let's keep looking. Have a good one, officers. Same to you, kid. They're so lazy. Well, that was a total waste of time. Yeah, my bad. It wasn't a total waste. We got to find out what's been going on with Julius. He's been missing from the diner for a few days. It's weird. He usually comes in every single day. Actually, that is important, but I didn't know about that, so maybe he's preoccupied with the ditchlings. I just hope he's okay. Where to next? Uh, Let's talk to Oscar. We should check in on Oscar. He's pretty smart. Maybe he'll have an idea of what we should do. I hope nothing else happened after all we went through last night. Actually, that's a good point, too, just to see if he's okay as well. They're so brave for sleeping in that house after everything that we went through. I'd rather sleep in the woods with the ditchlings than someplace that was that haunted. Your mom said it's safe, and I'm inclined to believe her. Why would she lie? Well, but how would she know that? 
Magic, probably, but there's only one way to find out. Let's go. They're right, man. They're right. Morning light streams in through the library's large windows in the bright daylight. It's once again a place of comfort, all menace having fled in the wake of Charles Shaw Jr.'s departure. No ghost, thank God. I was not up for an encore. Yeah, it's gone, just like your mom said it would be. You can't help but overhear the murmurings of an intense conversation coming from the mayor's office. Or rather the murmurings of an intense animal conversation. No, it could be Gretchen. Start making your way upstairs towards the mayor's office. Hey, where are you going? It's a bunch of dogs. A small gang of dogs holds court in the mayor's office. Most of the dogs quietly watch from the sidelines, but two of them, a sheep dog and a batson hound, are in a heated conversation with Mayor Jimmy. Their tags read Scraps and Daisy. Sounds like you've all sorted this out. I don't see why you need me to do anything about it. Sorted? Things aren't sorted until the sound is safe. Now we've got the beginnings of a militia together, but there's plenty of pets out there who are still ill-informed about those things crawling around in the woods. You're the mayor. They'll have to listen to you. Just tell them to stay inside until it's handled. Listen, Scraps, buddy, I hear you, but the last thing you need right now is anarchy in the streets. It's no use. I told you he'd be bullheaded. He's always bullheaded. Oh, it's a sore loser, aren't we, Daisy? Things are fine. Nobody has to worry about a thing. Why is my camera aimed so high? Uh, put that down a little. The mayor pulls himself away from the conversation to acknowledge you. Oh, ho, ho, I remember you. You're that out-towner from yesterday. The speaker. Uh-oh, the dogs murmur amongst themselves for a moment, then turn to face you. I'm sorry you had to see this little display. Politics can get so messy. Are y'all some kind of dog militia? Boom. Have any of you seen or smelled Gretchen? She and her person are missing. Is she missing? Oh dear. Scraps. You don't think... Gretchen's person would never let that happen to her. Wherever she is, I'm sure she's safe from those things. A dog like her doesn't get to be that age without a watchful human at her side. Even if she's safe, I don't like the sound of this. See, Jimmy? This is the cause of inaction. Gretchen is a pillar of our community, and she's missing. What will it take for you to finally open your eyes and do something? You wait until you're the last dog left in Scarlet Hollow, it'll be far too late to save yourself. Yes, I get it. You're all very upset. But what do you expect me to do about it? Shut down the town? What about economy? Do you even know what economy is, Jimmy? Or are you just throwing around fancy words you've, never, you've heard the humans say? Uh, of course I know what economy is. I know all about economyism. Oh, good, because I've never understood a lick of it when humans talk about economy. I just figured it was some sort of made-up word that they yell at each other when they would have stopped talking. So please enlighten us. I'm not going to debase myself by playing a game of trivia. Not in front of the speaker. Hmm, <laughs> I thought so. To answer your question, we did catch a whiff right around here, and another near her house. I haven't picked up anything around town since then. Let's hope those creatures haven't already gotten to her. Don't say that! Can you help us find her? You've got to have a better nose for this one, though. Um... Okay. Could you please help us find her? You've got better noses for this sort of thing. We'll do our best. We didn't intend to make any more trips out into the woods, but if it's for Gretchen, we'll take that risk. Yes! The dog militia will help us. She's a well-liked dog in these parts, been around longer than any of us. It'd be a blow to our community for her to fall victim to those monstrosities. <laughs> you know, Gretchen really admires you, Scraps. Oh, she flatters me. I'm nothing special. I'm just another dog. All the more reason to go after her before it's too late. Don't be so modest, Scraps. You're the kind of dog other dogs listen to. It's a damn shame the humans are so charmed by that charlatan. I'm right here, Daisy. I'm well aware. You think you're so high and mighty, don't you? Just because you can sit and stay the best? As if obedience is the best quality of a leader. That's very true. Wow, there's a lot of options here. I gotta look for a minute. <laughs> okay, we're not backing away. Everyone here can work together. Panic and streets would be bad for everyone, but we can't just not do anything about the ditchlings. Yes. I don't think there's much compromising here. The mayor is either in or he's out, and it sounds to me like he's out. I told you this would be a waste of time, Scraps. Now I should have listened to you. Let's go, shall we? Excellent. Office hours are officially over. Do close the door behind you. I'm overdue for my appointment with a nap.
You and the dogs exit the mayor's office and close the door behind you. They quickly turn a corner and vanish from your line of sight. Are you fucking... They said they'd help me, though. I'm sorry, did you just have a full-on conversation with that gang of dogs? I did. After last night, I'm willing to believe pretty much anything. At least Alex talking to animals is a bit of magic on our side. It is. I guess Oscar must be in the back. I know that's where I'd be if I finally managed to unhot my house. I've always been surprised at how unsupervised this place is. Sometimes it feels like anyone could just walk in and do whatever the f they wanted. I almost said whatever the fuck they wanted. Like what, still books? I mean, they could, right? I'm not saying anyone would. I'm just saying that people who in this town trust each other a lot. It's nice. It is actually pretty nice. Let's go find Oscar. Okay, Kanika, that was a little bit blunt. Ew, no. Uh, yeah, this isn't right. You make your way back towards the annex. It feels strange to be back here in the light of day, as if the events of the previous evening were all just a terrible dream. This hallway really takes me back. It's like it was only yesterday that we were last here, blissfully unaware that our entire lives were about to change forever. It was only yesterday. I know. <laughs> That's funny. Kanika knocks on the door. Oh, good morning. It's good to see all of you. Alex. He takes in the sight of you standing in the bright corridor. I uh, hope you're doing well this morning. Please come on in. You're doing really great, Rosalina. Not a lot of kids your age can take shots that well. You're being so brave. You don't have to talk to me like I'm five. But you are brave. You really are, Rosalina. You're like so badass. Alexis is right. This is more than most people have to deal with in their entire life. And here you are taking it like a champ. Dr. Kelly's kind of demeanor vanishes as she turns and glares at you. Oh my god, man. Oh, I see we have visitors. But her glance, her glare vanishes as she takes in your new vi visage. Oh my goodness. Her features soften into a look of shock and concern. Mr. Gutierrez told me what happened last night, and I must admit, I found it hard to believe. But your face, it definitely looks like you had years stolen from you. Whatever that means, it's concerning. I'd like to give you a physical. <laughs> I was thanking you that joke. Uh, yes, please fix me. I'm fucked up. Glad you're taking this seriously. I'll be at the clinic all day. Feel free to stop by when you get a chance. Maybe she can give me, like, some, uh, steroids or something. And not the illegal kind, like, the uh, physical steroid to help us. Her examination finished, Dr. Kelly returns to Rosalina's side. Yeah, shouldn't you all be traumatized? How's Reese? I actually am curious. How's Reese? He's fine. He's had a rough night, but he'll recover. Also, don't call me a dick. Rosalina and her both said she's fine, so I'm not a dick for asking that first. He's fine. Had a rough night, but he'll recover. He's used to this sort of thing. He just needs a couple days to get back on his feet. That means no more excitement. Not even a movie. Sorry to hear that, Dr. Kelly. But I want to see Shino G. No. Okay, but what if I want to hang out? Why am I able to flirt with Dr. Kelly so much? Hey, I did not say anything to you, phone. Chill. I don't really like these. Oh, honestly, yeah. I'd like to hear this from him, not filtered through you. He's sick, so you won't be hearing it from him. Now, I can't say I care for your tone right now. Yeah, whatever. Hey, how are you doing, Rosalina? <laughs> Tired? My leg hurts. A lot. But the medicine is helping. It's not so bad now. Plus, I got, I got to lie down in an actual bed last night. You have no idea how good that feels. Thanks, Alex. Can't believe you got any sleep after last night with all the ghost stuff. I just sat on the couch with all the lights on. I don't think I slept at all. I really needed some rest after, you know, the hospital in my foot. My body is desperately trying to get you to rest. All that activity yesterday was pretty brutal on your injury. It's never going to stop hurting if you keep pushing yourself. So, what are you not going to do today? Anything. That's right, you're staying right here. No walking around, no investigating haunted houses. Sorry, Dr. Kelly, I should have been better at stopping her. I take full responsibility. As her father, I should have. No need for anyone to step in to take blame for anything. It's the hospital's fault for sending her home at all. It's gross negligence, if you ask me. But give it time. Then you can do all the activities you want, alright, Rosalina? Yes. Have any of you seen Stella since last night? Now since dinner. She hasn't gotten in touch with any of you? 
I'm really starting to freak out a little. I really care about her. She's just gone. It's okay, Alex. We're gonna find her. It's not good. I haven't seen her since she ran off last night. I feel terrible. It's my fault, isn't it? I should have done a better job at warning her. I... Stella was practically banging down your door trying to get evidence of ghosts. I don't think you were going to be able to stop her. There's no way you could have known how she would react when she found it. I don't even think she knew how she would react. Besides, you don't... You didn't know how bad it was going to get. You can't blame yourself for everything, man. I know you probably feel like it's your responsibility to make sure everyone around you is okay, but sometimes that's just not going to be possible. You're only one guy. That's so true. That's what Rosalina is always saying. I suppose I do apologize more than I should. I'm sorry for apologizing. <laughs> you really do. Yeah, that is true. Why would I say that? She does seem caring, even about Reese. Even if she's a little bit blunt, she doesn't seem like a, a complete ass. I'm just going to be real with you. I, we found something in Oscar's house last night. A stone carving that gave me and Tabitha a vision of what happened there. There was one in the mines the other night, too. Both of them sort of had a pool on me. Whatever they are, there's something like them in your clinic. I felt it last night. Ooh, look at her face now. She said, mm, I don't like how you're saying that about my clinic. Oh my god, yeah. It's a premonition. Would you mind if we looked into it? Yes, I would mind. I understand that there have been strange events in Scarlet Hollow this week, but there's nothing unusual going on at the clinic, and I'm not going to let you go snooping around based on some funny feeling. But if something does happen at the clinic, aren't you worried about Reese? If it's anything like what happened to us last night, none of you have to concern yourself with my son's health. I know how to take care of him, even in a supposed ghost emergency or whatever it is you're worried about. Please. So I'm guessing Charlie didn't come back for an encore? Nah, <laughs> not as far as I know. I slept in Rosalina's room and I made sure to put some heavy objects on top of the hatch just to give myself a little extra peace of mind. But thanks to you, I didn't see or hear anything all night. I think we're in the clear. I didn't see anything either, but even if something did happen, I wouldn't want to know. I wouldn't know. I was asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. I'm too tired to worry about ghosts anymore, to be honest. Losing a limb would do that, especially if you decide to tromp around the next day like nothing happened. I would have been fine if it weren't for Charlie. Good thing he's gone then. Let's hope he stays gone. Alright, we won't say anything else. So, you've got your meds, you've got your nested pillows, a helpful friend by your side, and a cat to keep you company? Seems like you're all set. Make sure you do a whole lot of nothing today. I will. Bye, Dr. Kelly. Yeah, thanks again for coming down to see us, Joanne. Not a problem. I'd much rather she stay put than have to get in and out of cars. I'll call it later today to see how things are going. Hope the rest of the week is less eventful for the both of you. Goodbye, Rosalina. Make sure you stay put and keep Pixel company, okay? Don't worry, Doc. I keep her warm. I'm helpful. Oh, that was Pixel saying that. I was like, Rosalina? Dr. Kelly turns towards you again, her glare absent. And I hope you'll take me up on my offer, Alex. I'm concerned about you. I appreciate it. And then she pushes past you to leave Oscar's house. We'll let you kids have some space. Alexis, why don't you figure out a restful activity for you and Rosalina? Checkers? We'll do, Mr. Gutierrez. I brought some video games and puzzles from my house. And some movies, too. Whatever you want to do, Rosalina. She looks like she wants to sleep to me, bro. Oscar ushers you back down to the library. What's up? Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, or at least much better than yesterday. I can't thank you enough, Alex. I'd like to be as helpful as I can from here on out, now that our little situation is dealt with. I'll finally have time to dig into the town archives. Our house was haunted because someone was murdered there. The mine collapsed the other night was at the side of a masquerade. With enough research, maybe we'll be able to get a step ahead of the next crisis. Maybe we can actually preempt it. That is, assuming there's going to be a next crisis. But something tells me we aren't in the clear yet. We should compare notes. Not that I have any to start with, but if you know anything that might narrow down my research, it could save me a lot of time. Uh, we don't know that much more than you, I think, but I've got some hunches. I can't help but feel like there must have been some inciting events since everything started getting weird seemingly overnight. What that inciting event was or where to start looking for it, I have no idea. But it's something to keep in mind. Avery stares at you. 
I mean, it's obvious, right? Things only started happening once Alex got here. Uh-oh. Can you just use Avery a glance? No, we aren't throwing Alex under the bus. What? There's nothing wrong with being a magical catalyst. He's got a point. Or not he. They. My bad, my bad. Forty and flip. Sure, there's probably nothing wrong with someone being a magical catalyst, but there's some definitely something wrong with saying someone's a magical saying someone is. Okay, yeah, that is true. Just like how I say he instead of they on accident. If people get the wrong idea, we're only a couple of steps away from the whole town deciding to shaw him. Nobody's going to drag Alex into a witch hunt on my watch. That is true, I might get lynched. <laughs> I like to think we've outgrown the days of running people out of town on rails. I'd rather play safe. Don't worry, it's not like I'm gonna run around town telling everyone that Alex Maggot Magit? A bunch of terrible disasters into existence. But if there's a catalyst for all of this, why wouldn't it be a lost Scarlet finally coming home to Scarlet Hollow? If I may, Alex getting into town isn't the only major event that has happened lately. Pearland died over a week ago. Those creature in the creatures in the woods were already reproducing by the time you arrived. Not to mention, I started seeing things in our house before Pearl Land passed. I think... I never thought to make a note of exactly when the spirit made itself known. That's fair, honestly. If there's a root cause for all of this, hopefully there's a way to put the genie back in its bottle. I'm gonna do my best to find out if there have been any similar events, and whether there's anything special about Scarlet Hollow that might explain what's going on. Yes. Those carvings I warned Dr. Kelly about are important. To think there was something like that under my house all this time, and to think someone must have put it there, but who? There was one in the mines, and if you're right, there's one in my clinic too. Maybe that's what I should be focusing on right now. How many of those things are there? If we're lucky, maybe just those three, but I'd rather not count on it. Good thing Alex has an open appointment with the doc. You could look around for clues while you're there. I could try, yes, I'll try. It's probably a good idea to see her anyways for your health. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Reese is in danger for sure. We need to get Reese out of there before something bad happens. That sounds terrifying, but maybe necessary. No, no, I vetoed this. We don't want to repeat it last night. We should be more cautious about what we do next. We don't want anyone to get attacked or possessed by any more ghosts, even if it is to help a friend. Hopefully a warning text is all he gets, all he needs to get himself out of there. I'd like to thank that. At the very least, we've let him know to be careful. Yes. I don't know if we have time to play it that, to play a say. Uh, just give me a day or two to do some research before you do anything rash, okay? Boom. Whatever we're doing next, I feel like we're missing a vital team member. We need to find Stella and fast. I agree. We need to be- we need her brains and energy if we're gonna do any serious sleuthing. See you around, Oscar. Let us know what you find. I will. Maybe we cut that a little short, but that's okay. Good to know that you have an open invitation to clinic today. Finding Stella should be our priority, but it wouldn't hurt to check in on Reese later. It wouldn't hurt for you to get a checkup, either. Well, we also need to get tea with, uh, Sybil. Let's check out the diner. Good idea. Folks tend to congregate there. Maybe we'll run into someone who's seen Stella. Here's hoping Wendy doesn't try to rope me into clocking in early. Oh god, that's a good point. They might have to clock in early because of that. Feels like you've walked into a private meeting. The back booth is full of miners, and they are having what seems to be an intense discussion. Their expression gravely serious. What's going on? There's a strike up at the mines. They've made the diner their base of operations. When you asked for the morning off, I didn't think you'd be showing up for friends. Sorry, Aunt Wendy. Stella's got missing, and I've been helping these two track her down. You haven't seen her, have you? Don't you apologize now, and I can't say I have. Should I be worried about her? I mean, I hope not. We're not interrupting anything here, are we? Of course not. Any paying customer is welcome, as long as you aren't about to step on anybody's toes or cause a fuss. The miners in the back were too engaged in conversation to notice you enter, and instead of speaking in hushed voices, argued with each other loudly enough for you to easily overhear. Sure, the shift schedules are tough, and sure, we don't get enough time off for me to see my family as often as I'd like, but this is the best job I can get right now. Listen, kid, you're only a year or two into this gig. Trust me, the longer it goes on, the more it sucks the life out of you. Relatable. 
At first, you're just unhappy, but you think you can weather it until you find something better. A paycheck's a, a paycheck. I get it. But the next thing you know, you've lost years of your life to a company that doesn't give a solitary shit about you, that uses up every free second and can suck out of his workers, pays us just enough to survive, but not so much that we can ever save enough to get the hell out. Zax, we could get fired for this. I really need this paycheck. My sister needs the paycheck. I'm the only reason she can afford her tuition right now. I can't get fired. And the job still has its perks, like that company housing. I can't afford my own place and send money back home. I don't know where I would live if I didn't have this job. Right, the company housing. How generous did the big boss put you up in a company-owned shack that ain't had proper maintenance done in decades? You know she uses that housing as an excuse to pay us less. The company housing, that means almost nobody in this whole damn town owns the place they live. That's why the Scarlet's can't, can keep getting away with whatever they want. Zax, we don't have the numbers, man. You know this is risky. Riskier than most of us can afford. We would have the numbers if y'all would stand with me and not let management scare, management scare tactics get to you. Hell, there was a collapse less than two days ago and the boss expects us to riot, not to riot at the thought of being forced back down there to work while the threat of death looms over our heads? The threats only work if we let them. It doesn't matter whose name is on the deed for the place. Without us, there is no mine. We've got them against the ropes. We can't back down now or they'll come out swinging. No, I'm just gonna be blunt. Hey, if any of you see Stella, she's missing. Uh oh. They turn towards the doorway, all eyes glaring at you. Houston. I'm a Scarlet. They don't like me. The YouTuber? We ain't seen her. Harris's voice drops to a barely audible mumble. I hope she's okay. Oh, thank you. Screw my cousin. I mean, not necessarily. Uh, I'm not weighing in on that. I'm not informed enough about everything. That does suck, though. So, about the strike. We all know who you're related to, kid. Word travels fast. And I'll be damned if we talk business in front of you. Look, I support you guys, but maybe you can save this until next week. Tabitha's mom just died. This whole strike thing is hardly fair. You think I like? I mean, I do like Tabitha. I just, she's kind of roped in here, to be honest. I'm not a snitch. I don't actually have a horse in this race. I didn't even know Scarlet Hollow existed until a few days ago. Great, then don't weigh in and don't meddle with our lives. Good point, fair. Alright, we're leaving. Huh. <laughs> You try to leave the diner. Avery and Kanika trailing close behind you. Still no sign of Stella. Yeah, fair. Uh-oh. Before you can suggest your next move, you start to feel woozy. Spots form at the edges of your vision. Your legs suddenly become unstable and your body sending your clear sin signals of exhaustion. Pains you to imagine how difficult the effects of Charlie's deal would be to manage for someone less fit than yourself. Even if your powerful body is struggling just to walk from place to place. You managed to shake it off before Kanika and Avery noticed, but still, it, would, it won't be long before your aches, aching muscles need to rest. You should play your next move carefully. Let's go to Sybil. I'm supposed to get tea with your mom today. Maybe she'll have some ideas. My mom wanted to talk to you? She's probably going to give you some rocks or bundles of herbs for protection or something. We can humor her, though. Let's do it. The bells of the general storm chime welcomingly as you three enter. And that's where we're going to call it for now. Next time we'll chat with Sybil and get down to the bottom of finding Stella. Hopefully. It's been a long road, but I feel like we're getting close. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace.